I started my career in international banking and then ended up through a series of events starting the first microfinance bank in Rwanda, 1986. From there I, I worked on issues of philanthropy and leadership with Rockefeller Foundation and it was really this combination of working um, in commercial banking as well as seeing traditional aid and charity frankly not work when it came to solving big issues of poverty mm -hmm. that in 2001 thought there had to be a better way, this third road if you will. At the center of this was the idea of what we call patient capital, mm -hmm. that we could raise charitable money but rather than give it away as handouts invest in entrepreneurs who saw the poor as people who wanted to solve their own problems recognizing that if they were working in areas like healthcare, water, housing, energy where governments had failed mm -hmm. that they were essentially creating markets where people had never gotten the things that they needed before and so what Acumen does is raise the charitable money invest in entrepreneurs and companies that serve the poor with basic services leave the money for a long time, provide a lot of management support, and help them really grow, ideally as models for the way this, the world can solve some of its most pressing problems. We've invested about $70 million in 65 companies. We've seen those companies raise an additional quarter billion dollars of funds for their work. So you see a movement towards more traditional forms of capital, but uh, it can be a tougher road in the early stages especially. Right. You created four offices, three outside of the U.S., and you staff them with local people who help you find these entrepreneurs. You can't do this kind of investing from thousands of miles away. Frankly, it's hard to do it from hundreds of miles right. away. And so we've got offices in Pakistan, India, Kenya, and Ghana. And each of those offices identifies entrepreneurs and works with them for a long time, five, seven, sometimes ten years. So when things are good, can really help network, bring in other forms of capital. When things are bad, we've had to help in turnaround situations, but it makes all the difference. So what's the environment like for those entrepreneurs in Pakistan and East Africa? If you didn't exist, where would they be getting capital and how would they be growing their businesses? Well, first, what the environment is like is just incredibly tough. There's this real dearth of access to credit, to investment, early mm -hmm. stage. And often banks certainly don't want to lend money. They look for 200% collateral. Um, and they're not going to go early stage for the most part. And investors want larger deals because it takes so much time and such high, such high risk to do these early deals. So there really aren't a lot of options in early stage innovation, which ironically is really what the world needs now. So social entrepreneurship is a really hot topic right now. It's a really hot field. But there's still a lot of debate about what actually works. And I know that you've, for Acumen's whole existence, been very focused on measuring impact. So what can you measure, and what in a perfect world in the future would you ideally like to be measuring? As simple as it sounds, we measure the outputs that a company might create. So how much water is being sold every day, 100,000 liters a day in Farbogen outside of Lahore, um, how many drip irrigation sets have been sold to smallholder farmers, how many jobs have been created, uh, is income coming into this community, including through add-on investments. What is much more difficult to measure and what I'd love to see in the future is answers to some of the so what questions. That when you see farmers get drip irrigation, we know that there's often a doubling and tripling of their yields. So we can make broad-based estimates, but to be able to move that into granularity, not just for the purpose of saying this is a good investment, but for the purpose of really building a society where we make smarter decisions with our government money as well as with our financial markets. You yourself are an entrepreneur having grown this organization from nothing to what it is now 10 years later. Um, over these 10 years, what do you know now as an entrepreneur that you didn't know previously? I know we could talk about that for hours, but what are some of the things that come to mind? I think you know at the beginning how important trust is to building any kind of institution. So much of the work that Acumen Fund has done around the world has been done through a mix of people who are paid on the team and consultants who give their time pro bono. Um, organizations that work with us, these kinds of partnerships that need a very different kind of flexibility as a manager and as an entrepreneur. So I would say one is really learning how to navigate many different kinds of sectors, individuals, for-profit, non-profit, to work on solving a common issue. 
and that's probably one of the most important leadership skills that we need. Uh, two, which we talked about before, is that local institutions really matter. Um, and in building those institutions, it goes back again to trust. How do you create enough trust between global, the local institution, and then the institutions across? And third, that for our work, that when it comes to solving problems of poverty, I would say at the beginning that we were um, probably a little too optimistic that business could be enough. That business solutions, while they're critical, are not enough. And then if you're looking in critical areas like water and healthcare, we learn where the markets work and we learn the market's limitations as well.